Well, I tell you what, um, I, didn't, I didn't name this. Kirk named it apathy. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, sometimes we live, we live in a world that demands us. You know, we're, we're men. A lot of us, you know, we're, we're busy. We work. We, we, we do a lot of things. We have a lot of responsibility, and we have a lot of demands. And I think, you know, what, what can happen sometimes is we can get so busy in life, we can get so busy doing physical things, right, that we forget the spiritual. And that's really the whole theme of, of this whole man up. That's really what it's about. It's, it's about how as men, I don't think a lot of us need to be taught how to be men in the physical. Not all of us need to be taught how to work. I think, I think we have a lot of us out here who, who know how to be men in the physical. But when it comes to spiritual, sometimes there's something that's lacking. And so I, I don't know everything about it. I'm just going to share a few things that I've learned and, uh, and just try to encourage you guys. So uh, I think uh, Jesus said it best uh, when, when he was speaking to the Pharisees. And he said, he, he, was, he was reclining at the table with them. And the Pharisees, it, it says in, uh, this is in Luke 11, verse th- uh, 38, it says, The Pharisees were aston- astonished to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup um, and of the dish, but inside you're full of greed and wickedness. And he says in verse 40, he said, You fools, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? So I just included that because I, I, I want to point out that, you know, we're not talking right now, I'm not talking about the physical versus the spiritual. I'm talking about the physical and the spiritual. God made us both physical and spiritual men. Sometimes we, we talk so much about the physical things, like, oh, no, we, we can't be physical people. We've got to be so spiritual. But that's just not right. God made both of these parts of us, and we, we need to be operating in both of them. I just want to encourage us in the spiritual. So first thing I wanted to kind of talk about, I just wanted to give you kind of a, a little bit, most of you guys don't know me, just a little little backstory. It was, it was how my week started. It kind of started crappy. And uh, this last Sunday, I was, I was kind of, I was getting ready for this men's retreat. I was getting things together. And uh, I tell you what, things were just going wrong. My, my, both of my vehicles are old and rusty. They were falling apart and both have problems. I, I have a project I'm working on my house. It's it's just not going the way I want it to. And I, I just I have all these things going wrong. And I was just kind of having one of those freak out moments. Anyone else have freak out moments from time to time? I had one of these freak out moments. And I was just, I didn't even know I was having it until I was in the middle of it. And I was freaking out. And my wife just kind of pointed it out. She's like, oh, you're having one of those moments. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I am. And, uh, you know, once we realized, we, we prayed about it. And I'll tell you what, something changed. You know what changed? After we prayed, well, my cars are still falling apart. <laughs> my house still is in desperate need of work. I have dozens of other problems that I'm not even going to mention. But guess what? What changed that night, this was last Sunday, what changed that night was my attitude. <laughs> Nothing else changed but my attitude. And I tell you what, and a lot of times in life, that, that's all we can change. We can't change the things around us a lot of times. We're, we're in the circumstances we're in, but we can always change our attitude. And, and that's what I really want to talk about, the spiritual and the physical. I, I had my mind on my physical problems. I had my mind so wrapped around and consumed by life and consumed by the things that were happening to me that I totally forgot about eternity. I forgot about the hope that I have in Jesus. And that's what the enemy tries to do, right? He tries to steal that hope away from us. He tries to take that away from us. And and, and, and so we we can't remember what Jesus has done for us. So I've had a change in my attitude. And I tell you what, it's been so much better. It was so much easier to study with with a fresh attitude, fresh mind. I had a quote that I made up. This isn't a very good one, but I would say it anyways. Let's not let today's troubles cloud tomorrow's eternity. That was my quote. That's the only one you're getting tonight. (laughs) 
All right. Anyone who has Bibles, I'd like you to flip. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. I was reading this. I got a couple things out of this I've never seen before. So chapter 10, verse 32. I'm going to read it. I, 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 got, I got two specific things I just think are just so good when we're talking about becoming spiritual men. So Hebrews 10, verse 32. I'll just... I'll go ahead and read that. It says, But recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property, since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one. So the first part I, I, I read in this, the first thing that really stuck out to me was a part where it says, remember the former days or recall the former days after you were first enlightened. That little part there. And I, it, it just kind of hit me that this is key, men. This is key to our spiritual walk, remembering. I think, I think so many times we, we forget about those early days. We forget about the time when we were enlightened, you know what this is really talking about is enlightened. It's, it's basically saying the time you got saved, remembering that time after you got saved. And I think, you know, as Christian men, all of us in here who are saved and, and believe in Jesus, we, we have a story, right? We have a story. What we were like, how God changed us, and what we're like now, right? And see, those stories are something no one can take away from us. That's something we have. That's, that's something that we always have in our minds that we can look back on and remember you know, I remember, you know, I, I was saved. I asked Jesus into my heart when I was like six years old. But I, I tell you what, I, I've been thinking about it more and more lately. I, I just really don't think, I, I think about that and it's like, I don't really think I gave my heart to the Lord truly until I was probably around 18 years old. I just, I never really had that experience. I never really had that change, the repentance. And uh, I, I, I look back to that time. I remember that time. I remember when it was fresh, when everything was new. All of a sudden, this, all these stories I, I knew about Jesus growing up started becoming new. And it was like, wow, I find, I'm understanding this. This is making sense now. You know, in marriage, they call that the, what, the honeymoon period? It's, it's that, that time when it's just like everything's new and fresh. You know, you, you, you keep seeing something new. It's like, whoa, I, I, I never knew this before. That's what it was like. And I tell you what, every one of us who've come to Christ, we've, we, we should at least have that time, that time where everything's new, everything's changed, everything's different than it was. Right. And I challenge you guys to recall, remember that time. Because we have an enemy who's trying to get us to forget those things. We have an enemy who's constantly trying to bombard us with life's problems and all kinds of things that happen, trying to get us to forget our first love. I tell you what, when I, went, when I was first saved, I was thinking about eternity. I was thinking about hopeful things. I had bad issues going on, but I was thinking about better things. But you know what? As I get back in life, I go back to my day job. I go back to the worldly things, the worldly people in my life. And I start, maybe not at first, but over time, you start to get kind of, kind of weighed down, right? You just kind of get groggy. People, people are just coming at you. No one else has changed. You're changed, but everyone else is kind of the same old selves. And and you kind of get back in the same routine, you know, every day, the same, nine to five, whatever you're doing, you're doing the same thing. And before you know it, we get, you know, what we were talking about, apathy. You get kind of, what, jaded. You, you start, you know, you're in, you're in your life and you're just kind of getting bogged down with the things that are happening. We need to remember, remember what it was like. Remember those times when we were close to the Lord and, and, and when we were really striving after him and, and, and seeking him. The second thing I wanted to point out from that, he said in verse, uh, in verse 34, he said, you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one. And that one, man, that hit me real hard. Joyfully accepted the plundering. Plundering is like, what, robbery? You joyfully accepted, what, being robbed. And I, I, like, had to think about that for a while. I was like, man, should we all be joyful about that? Like, should I be joyful about being robbed? I don't think this means, like, being happy when people steal your stuff. But what it means is that 
when things happen in our life, whether it's being robbed, whether it's, you know, car issues, whatever the troubles that you have in your life, whatever those bad things happen, that we don't let those things get the best of us, that we remember we remember our, our hope in our eternity. It says that, that when there's this plundering of these goods, when these people got all their stuff say, uh, taken from them, they knew that they had a better possession and an abiding one. Whenever things happen in our lives, guys, we need to remember our possessions. We need to remember our life's not wrapped up in the things of this earth, you know? Don't get me wrong. I don't want to come home, you know, after this and, like, my front door is open <laughs> all my stuff's gone. But you know what? If it does happen, I got better possessions and abiding ones that'll last forever, right? We need to remember that. So I, I just want to ask you guys, do you have that hope inside of you? That whatever happens in this life, whatever might happen, do you have that hope that you can, you can look past today's struggles and, and look to eternity? I hope we do. Sometimes it's hard to remember that we're spiritual people at all. I mean, it's just, we get so bogged down. Like I said, you know, we just get in our, our, our lives and our routines and we just kind of forget it. There's this verse, you don't have to flip there, but in, in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, it says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall now know fully, even as I have been known fully. See, we don't, we don't yet see things how we ought to see them. See, we're, we're, we're seeing just a, a really dimly lit picture of, of, of the eternal things. And I want us to have a spiritual mindset, a, a, the ability to see things beyond today. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm in the middle of a forest but all I can see is this tree right in front of me. And I can't, I can't see all the other stuff. And, and sometimes that's how our life is. We, we, we can see the things that are immediately around us, and we think that's, that's it. That's the most important thing. I, w- I want to see all this, all, all the things that the Lord wants me to see. I want to be spiritually minded. So, yeah, I, I don't know any. I already said this, but I don't know everyone here. But I know the men I do know, and I, I see a lot of men I, I think are hard workers. I, I don't know everyone, but I tell you why. I think I, I'm a hard worker. I try to be. I, I, like, I like a hard worker, someone who's willing to put in a good 8, 10 hours a day, or 16 if you're Luis. <laughs> you know, I, I love that. I love people who, who are willing to get their hands dirty, do some work. I, I love it. But I started thinking about this lately, and, and I... I wonder if, you know, doing all this work, we're doing all this work, we're, we're putting all, all our time in, and we're providers, right? As men, we're providers. Whether, whether you're a single guy, you're thinking, oh, I'm not a provider. Well, yeah, you are. You're a single guy, you're, you're providing for, your, for yourself, right? You're a married guy, you're providing for your family. You have kids, you're providing for your children. And I want to encourage you guys, whatever stage you're in, wherever part of life you're in, you have a responsibility to provide not only the physical needs of your family, but the spiritual needs. You know, you might be filling up your refrigerator at home with all kinds of good food, but what are you giving your family spiritually? Jesus, um, Jesus was talking to, uh, where am I here? I've got to find it. He was talking to uh, a lady in, in, in John chapter 4. Um, Jesus was on his way up to Galilee, and he had to go through Samaria. The Bible says he had to go through Samaria, <laughs> like, like it was this bad thing. They, they didn't associate. The Jews did not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus went to this well, I guess it was Jacob's well, and he sat down, and the lady came by, and he said, hey, can you get me a drink? And the lady was, like, shocked, because she's a Samaritan, he's a Jew. Like, she's like, why are you talking to me? You shouldn't be talking to me, or I, I, I can't get you a drink. And Jesus responded to her. He said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. 
And a few sentences later, Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So I wonder, you know, when we're providing for ourselves, for our family, we're providing food and water, right? We're, but are we providing that spiritual drink? Are we, are we bringing the spiritual elements to our family, to ourselves? Are we filling ourselves up with these spiritual things? Or is it just the physical things that are here today, gone tomorrow? The physical food and the physical water, that, that's, that's going to be gone real soon. All that pizza we just ate, it's going to be in the sewer tomorrow. Just being real with you guys. I'm just... <laughs> let's, let's pursue the spiritual things, right? right. What about protectors? I, I, I think men, as men, we're protectors, right? Even as young boys, I, I tell you what, I don't know how many guns I've owned as a child. I, I don't mean real guns. I mean like twigs from a tree that were shaped like this. <laughs> Did any, any of you own those guns as a child? I own many of those. I think, you know, as a young kid even, we, we kind of grow up with this idea of protection, being protectors, being people who can protect ourselves. I remember just a funny little story. When I was little, I, I'd go into a public restroom. My mom would say, you know, if, if anyone touches you or says anything, you, you scream. I said, it's all right, mom. I'm like five years old. It's all right, mom. I'll karate chop them. <laughs> right? I, I had this idea in my head that I could protect myself. Even though I was five years old, I, I, I couldn't protect a fly. But I had this idea that I, I was a protector. And, and I tell you what, that doesn't really go away. As we get older, we're protectors, whether it's protectors of ourselves, protectors of our family. I mean, we get, you know, alarm systems for everything we have. We, we you know, we get all kinds of guns. We get all kinds of things to protect ourselves. What about, like, you know, like the really safe uh, minivan with all the airbags? The whole thing's like a big airbag. Protect yourself, right? Protect yourself. Protect your family. We're protectors. That's awesome. Don't want to discourage that because that's a good thing. That's something God did in us. But I encourage you to protect your family and protect yourself spiritually. Because I tell you what, these bodies are going to die whether you want them to or not. They're, they're, they're going fast. But, you know, the things that are eternal, we need to protect those things. I tell you what, I protect, I have a family. I got a, I got a young daughter. And, and she's the one I think of whenever I'm talking about this because I, I think about how I'm protecting her spiritually. I, I have a weapon that I use to protect her spiritually. You know what it is? Wooden spoon. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. You know, I have an enemy. Every day, he breaks into my house. And I, I lock the doors, I deadbolt him, but he still gets in. And he's trying to get my daughter's heart. Every day. And I got to protect that with everything I have, because if I don't, he's going to get her. I tell you what, guys, we need to be protecting ourselves, protecting our own hearts protecting the hearts of our family. We have an enemy who's out to steal, kill, and destroy, right? Let's protect, the, let's protect them, okay? Let's, let's focus on the, spirit, on the physical aspects of life. We need to, but I think we know how to do that. Let's focus on the spiritual too. Let's add that to our repertoire of things we know how to do that we can protect our family spiritually. We can provide, protect, and be men who do these things for our lives, or for our family and for ourselves. So I just, at the end of the day, I just want to be like Jesus. I'm wrapping up here. I, I just want to be like Jesus. That's really what it is. And Jesus, I know he was, he was physical and spiritual. He was both. And that's what, that's what we're called to be. And so, you know, with all these speakers that are going to get up, they're, they're going to, you know, expound on this more. But I, I just encourage you guys with everything I'm saying, and I think you can pick up on the theme, be spiritual men. Not just physical, but be spiritual men. Thank you. Thank you.